My goodness. Why don't you just lift your hands up to the Lord? The Bible says an uplifted hand blesses God. Let's, let's, he, he stretched his out on the cross for you. The least we can do is say, Father, we worship you. We surrender you to you. We, 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 we want you. Come on now. Mm. Why don't you just lift your voices with me? Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're a good Father. You're a good God. Lord, I, I pray you'll speak to us today. Well, I feel you, Holy Ghost. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, that you will prepare not only this service, but all the upcoming services, Father. And Lord, we're asking you, even for the upcoming children's crusade, Lord, we're asking you to save souls in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As you're opening your Bibles to Matthew chapter 12, let me just tell you, I'm bringing you a message real quickly today called Stretch. And I believe God's got something, something just, God's here after somebody. Uh, I'm supposed to give you an announcement right now, but I'm going to tell uh, somebody. I was praying, and as I was praying, uh, this is going to seem a little weird to some of you, but, but I was praying, and, and the Lord brought a situation to my mind. There's a couple here that the doctors say it's going to probably medically impossible for you to have children. I just felt led to pray that you will conceive. You shall bear a child. I felt that this morning, and, and I was praying over you. And, uh, and I asked the Lord just to bear witness inside of you concerning that in Jesus name amen well next week when you get here there's going to be a little different uh, we'll have our normal Sunday morning but there's going to be a kids set that's just phenomenal I mean this is the whole stage huge uh, and starting Sunday night we're going to have a kids crusade and people say why why are you doing something like that I'll tell you why I'm doing something like that one children need to know Jesus but there was a little girl living in a home with an abusive alcoholic barely had anything to eat and was wearing flower sacks for dresses. And somebody at seven years old picked my mama up and took her to church, and she gave her life to Jesus Christ. And how dare we not return that to the people of this community? And so we're going to be having a special children's ministry on the 16, 17, 18, and 19, and it is world class. I mean world class. And we want to encourage you to not only bring out your family, but encourage your neighbors and their children to come. Now, don't just take their children without telling them. Can I get an amen? <laughs> that could be a problem. But we want you to bring your family in Jesus' name. It's going to be a powerful time. All right, Matthew chapter 12, verse number 9. Again, Father, open this word to us today. Going on from that place, this is part two in our wounded series. Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled, I want you to notice that, it is, this has already occurred, a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And he said to them, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable would you say that word with me how much more valuable is a man than a sheep therefore it is lawful therefore is it it is lawful to do good on the sabbath and then he said to the man notice this stretch out your hand so he stretched it out and it was completely restored just as sound as the other now that word that i stressed in that last verse is used very quickly here two times in this passage that word stretch and today, I, I want you to understand that that word actually has a very long amount of definitions. But I, I picked three of those out for you. To stretch means to extend by force. To stretch means to cause something to regain its original shape. Have you ever taken something off of something and you can't really get it back on? You know, you know it came off of there, so it would go to figure that it would go back on there. But so many times when something, well, I feel God, and what I, this is the first out of three services, the first time I felt this at this point in the message, but sometimes when you mess something up, you don't think it can ever be fixed. And to stretch means to regain the original shape. The third thing is to push to the limit. When you stretch something, it's pushed to the limit. Now, none of these definitions are extremely popular in relation to the situation of the storyline of this passage. But there is a man whose hand has shriveled. The fact that his hand is shriveled implies that it has not always been shriveled, that it has not always been wounded, that it has not always been in this condition. That at one time that his hand had been normal. It had been at least as, just as normal as the other hand. But whatever had happened probably wasn't a foreseen occurrence. 
something that life threw his way was not planned. Everything was on schedule. Everything was going according to what he thought his life should be. And then in a moment, suddenly everything changed. How many of you understand that change happens like that, usually in our lives? You see, we don't know what happened, but we do know that either a sickness or an accident had caused damage. The damage was done. And as a result of the damage, now the Scripture describes this hand as shriveled or withered. That the damage was done and it had caused his hand to atrophy. Now atrophy is something that moves much quicker than most of us would imagine. Atrophy by definition is the loss of mass. I thought it would be much more in depth in, uh, in definition than that, but it simply means that it used to be more than it is. Atrophy by definition means it, it used to be stronger. It used to have more skill. Something has been lost, and mainly it's been the mass, the ability. Now, it may still be somewhere there in there. It has all the right parts, but it has lost its original form. Somebody, listen to me, I feel the Holy Spirit in what I'm about to say to you. The devil has convinced you that you have lost your original calling. You've lost your original form. But God sent me with a message this morning to say that he's going to stretch you back to where you need to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you see, atrophy begins to occur. And as it begins to occur, it happens rather quickly and things are not the same. It happens so quickly that modern medicine has made the prevention of atrophy one of its first lines of recovery. Anybody in here ever had surgery? Can I see your hand if you've ever had surgery? Wow, I don't want to be one of you, but hey man. How many of you thought they got you up way too fast and told you to start walking way too fast? Almost every single hand went up. How many of you think those nurses did that because they were mean? Hey man. You see, no matter how mean you thought they were, you have to understand that atrophy begins to kick in quickly. And as atrophy begins to kick in quickly, medicine has learned they have to get you moving because the quicker that you begin to move, the more the muscles begin to restore themselves. The more the muscles begin to, to heal and, and, and it, it, it stops atrophy from taking a hold in your life. So they have to get you moving. If not, atrophy will kick in and will take hold. You see, it can take hold within days. And, and when something was once healthy and it becomes unhealthy, we have a natural urge that, that allows atrophy in our lives. The natural urge is when something hurts and something is wounded, we draw it in. We want to protect it. You know, it's like having a, a hurt foot. How many of you know if you have a hurt toe, somebody's going to step on it? So what do you do? You draw it back. You protect it. You, you guard it. But here's what we also understand. If you hurt this knee, you will favor this knee so much that you will stress this knee out and it will overcompensate and the damage will not only be in the one side but it will occur in the other side because as this knee grows weaker from being overcompensating this knee begins to atrophy and the, the struggle continues atrophy is a danger unto our lives but atrophy is not the only thing uh, uh, in, in our muscles that uh, our uh, muscle atrophy is not the only place that our lives can suffer from atrophy you see, because when something happens, damage occurs, we always have that natural instinct to withdraw and to come back and to pull ourselves in and to get ourselves into a safe place. And God called me to tell somebody today, He's tired of you running. He's tired of you walking away in fear. It's ready for you to stake your claim and realize that Jesus didn't call you to live uh, under the thumb of the devil. Jesus called you to be the sons of the Most High God. He called you to be the, the kings and the queens and the princesses of this earth, the priests of the living God. He called you to victory. He called you not to walk under the defeat of the devil. And the problem is atrophy has crept into your life. Now probably one of the places that we suffer the most from with atrophy, uh, and it's blown my mind as I preach this twice in the earlier services today, uh, by the time we start, a couples are sitting like this. And by the kind of the end of it, some of them are doing like this. Because atrophy wants to attack your marriage. A marriage that was healthy for years can face some kind of a blow, some kind of an attack. And what we find ourselves doing is withdrawing from the one that we should be loving. We find ourselves, we don't really mean for it to be that way. I mean, we still love them, we're still married to them, but we find ourselves making it harder to reach across the car or reach across the bed or reach out and take their hand than almost anything else in life. 
but because before, because the problems have made us protect ourselves. I, I don't want, I might be stuck with you, but I don't, I don't have to let you hurt me. Don't make me say my own amens this morning. We begin to hedge our bets. We begin to live in such a way that we're protecting our hearts so we don't let you hurt us anymore. We don't let you wound our hearts anymore. And we draw back, and before long, you better watch out because atrophy will set into your marriage. It won't be what it was. It won't be as strong as what it was. It won't be as full as it was. You'll not be there ministering to each other. But if you could just stretch yourself a little bit, take yourself a little step further and reach across the pain, at least across the problems, you can begin to understand why Christ said, I want you to be like an example of Christ in the church. I want you to be willing to die for each other and live for each other. I want you to, to give it all you have. But instead, we allow atrophy to sneak in to our marriages. And before long, we've been robbed. We've had our hearts torn out. And pain has destroyed who we are. And something that could have been avoided now has become a reality as our marriages are cold and distant. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. Of course, this might be for the TV audience. Well, that's not the only place. Sometimes atrophy hits our families. Things happen. We suffer barriers that have been crossed we suffer broken rules both spoken and unspoken rules that are broken we suffer bitterness and before long atrophy begins to set in and sometimes it's not even any of these things sometimes it's just schedules we value those relationships but if we don't put value to them before long they will atrophy they will die Sometimes, it's like a brother that came in this morning. I was so glad for it when he said, hey, I'm coming. I said, well, you're coming, you're singing. But it did something to our relationship when they're coming through and said, we're stopping by. Why? Because it showed value. But because we have not shown value to people in our family, atrophy has set in. Am I, am I preaching to anybody this morning? It's not just in your family, but it's relationships. Sometimes there are people that God sent you for a reason and you allow those relationships to get cold and dead and shriveled because you've not put value into them. And God sent people to meet the needs of your life, but you've not valued them. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. Oh, or, or maybe this is, this is probably most of us. Uh, here's another area that atrophy really, really hits our spiritual life. I cannot believe you're allowing the 815 service is not even awake to out amen you today. I mean, spiritual lives. Atrophy hits us. Something has happened. Maybe we failed or, or we feel like we've been failed and we draw back and we, we draw in. But the, here's the problem. When you draw back and you draw in from the things of God and you're protecting yourself, the devil will use your drawing back and drawing in to draw you out. And before long, you won't even be doing the things of God. Oh, Pastor Don, I don't know about that. Let me just tell you how it works. You come into this house, and they're worshiping, and they're praising God. And, man, I love that kick, kicking first song we did today. That's awesome. You know, and you're going, you're going, I don't know what you're getting out of it because I've had a rough week, and I've had a hard week, and, and before long, you hadn't praised in so long, you're afraid to try it again because you're afraid God will have forgot where your seat is. One day, I'd just like to make you all stand up and change seats. So you can realize that I don't care where you're sitting in your life. He still loves you. He still called you. He's still chosen you. And he knows right where you are. Amen. And what you need to do instead of backing up, you need to step up and step into the presence of God. <laughs> Pastor Don, I feel like my prayer life is dull. Can I tell you why you probably feel like your prayer life is dull? It is. It is dull. You haven't used it in so long. You haven't used it like you needed to. You haven't taken care of it like you need to. And you're sitting there and you're drawing back and going, it's just dull and I don't understand. And it's shriveled up and it's not what it could be. What do you have to do? You have to realize it's atrophied and realize something. I've got to start stretching. I've got to start working it. And you need to get up a little earlier. Oh, I better hurry up. I'm sorry. Maybe your faith seems gone. It's because you've allowed it to atrophy. But there is hope. Whatever it is I think that you're dealing with, there are people here who, whose hopes have atrophied. Your dreams have atrophied. Your love has atrophied. 
it's a shriveled reminder of what it once was. But just as in the story, when Jesus enters the room, the picture that you need to understand is this. When Jesus walked in, when there was a man with a need, Jesus was drawn to the need. Some of you go, but you don't understand how broken I am. Don't you understand what Jesus said? He said, I didn't come here for the well. I came for the sick. I came for those who were hurting. I came for those who have failed. I came for those who feel like they don't deserve to be in my house. He said, that's the ones I want to hang out with. Why? Because God comes after the need to me today, man. That's done. Why are you fired up? Because I feel Jesus. And if you think I'm too fired up, you might fall into our next category. The Pharisees. You see, the Pharisees don't like it when Jesus walks into the room because they don't like what they feel. They begin looking for a reason to attack him. Why? Because they were just as unhealthy as the man with the shriveled hand because they suffered from shriveled faith. But they don't like the fact that Jesus is exposing that. So they want you to stay like you are so they don't have to feel bad about who they are. But Jesus is met you right where you are to change who you are so they say to jesus let's keep it how it is jesus is it lawful for you to heal on the sabbath jesus by his very nature was calling the man out of his despair jesus says to the to this man he says i'm calling you to stretch to a new position so jesus asked them when they say well can you can you heal this man on the sabbath jesus said well let me let me ask you a story and he sums it up like this he basically says uh, uh, there's this lamb and he's, in a, he's fallen into a ditch and he says, if you could change the le- lamb's condition, would you? If it was it within your power to change the condition of the lamb, would you? And then he says this, how much more valuable is a man? There's that word, value. So you'll understand what value is in this context. Value is when you walk into the store, you see the price of something and you think how hard you work to earn that money and you have to decide, is it worth what I'm about to give for it? I've got a sermon here, but I'm going to diverge for a second. I walked into this place on many a day, and what I've offered up to God has not been worth what I'm offering, what I'm about to get. I was all I can offer is pain and struggle and problems, but Jesus says, you don't understand. I'm not here for self-righteousness. I'm here for the person who knows right where they are. And his value is great. You see, value. Jesus is calling them to a place where... They are to be restored to the original shape God created them for. Jesus is calling them to stretch them to their original form. But you see, it's all about value. What price are you willing to pay to be restored? It's going to cost you something. But we're all looking for this magic pill. What did the serpent say to Eve in the garden? What did he say to her? He said, if you eat that, you will be like God. So you eat that, you're going to be godly. And people have been showing up at churches over and over and over again for years hoping that all of a sudden one day something will make them godly they can eat one little thing and take one little pill but i don't have a magic pill for you but i do have medicine for you this morning it's the word of god because my question is how much value do you put on the change that jesus can bring how much value do you put on him taking the atrophy out of your marriage I mean, think about it. You love that person, but there's wounds. Can I show you how to stretch the atrophy out of your marriage? Are you ready for this? I'm just going to look right at my wife when I say they're ready for this. She's going to fall out of her seat. Y'all watch this. God's going to get all over her. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Sometimes to stretch the atrophy out of your your marriage, you have to say, I'm sorry. Yeah, y'all don't have to do it in front of everybody. Sometimes you have to be willing to say, ooh, do I have to do that one, Lord? You're right. (laughs) See, some of you want Jesus to heal your marriage, but you're not willing to stretch your marriage. You've got to work that thing. You've got to step up to the plate and say, all right, God, I want to apply your word to my marriage. I want to know you. And the word says I need to do good to those that have even done wrong to me. I need to love them. And even if we feel 
Like there's something that stressed our relationship. We have to get it to the point. We don't withdraw, but we engage in the things of God together. I'm preaching to somebody. I know this is going to sound really, really overreaching, but I, I, I feel faith. I'm stretching my faith. Somebody, if you could get this, it'll keep you out of divorce court. If you would, instead of drawing back, if you'd start running in. If you don't feel comfortable embracing your own spouse, I'm preaching to you. God can heal your marriage. Sometimes it's your family. I know you all love your brother-in-laws. Last service, people really laughed, and I said, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any sisters in here, do I? <laughs> Come on. But you love your brother-in-law. But you know, sometimes you've got to go the extra mile for your family. You've got to step up a little bit further, and it's just like that in your relationships. If they're atrophying, you have to say, what do I need to do to fix this? The word actually applied does something that I've just found out in my own life. I, I don't know why, but Pastor Danny and I were having a discussion recently, and, and I told him about two people that have hurt me very, very deeply. And, and, and when I shared with him about those two names, I, I said, I just can't even stand to see them. I should have remembered what the Bible says. <laughs> Confess your sins to one another that you may be healed and so when I confessed it it's like God said now you have to see them every day <laughs> hallelujah they came screaming back into my life in just regular occurrences and I had to say okay God obviously I see your work at uh, your hand at work here let me do what the word says I will do good to those that have done me wrong and I'm watching God rebuild those relationships to the point I have even sought them out. You see, God wants to change who you are. We might not be screaming right this moment, but I'm telling you the devil's screaming because somebody's about to get free. Atrophy has set in far too long in your life, particularly your spiritual life. It's time for you to stop drawing back and start running in. When you feel the Holy Spirit, it's time to feel free to lift your hands again. But Pastor Don, you don't understand how stained my hands are with sin. You don't understand how Jesus washes you clean. But Pastor Don, my sin is big. <laughs> His grace is bigger. I came riding in this morning to the dark parking lot here. I'm pulling into the parking lot, and the radio station's playing. I never turn it on because I usually pray all the way in. On Sunday mornings, I turn it on, and the radio, I just felt to turn it on, and it's playing this song called You're Bigger. And I, and I just got, I'm sitting down here in the dark, and people are pulling in, and I'm like, I'm worshiping in my car. Going, I can't even get in the building. Why? Because... I don't care how big your problem is. That song was reminding me this morning that God is bigger. He's bigger. Let me hurry with this. The only one who was about to be healed was the one who had decided that he valued his future more than his present pride. He couldn't really hide his problem anyway. I mean, he had proven he could survive this way, but Jesus was offering him the chance to now thrive. And now he's going to stretch his faith to reveal his present condition to the one who had the power to change it. I want to note this, that Jesus could have delivered everyone in the room, but they had to be willing to stretch. I'm going to close with this today. You see, Jesus could have just simply spoken the word, and this man would have been healed. How many times did Jesus say in, in, in healing people, uh, your faith has made you whole, be healed? Take up your bed and, and go home. Uh, but, but he said to the woman, you know, uh, uh, be healed. Go your way, sin no more. He gave them whatever they were, but not in this particular case. He never called this man healed. He never said you're going to be healed. He, he never said it. What did he say? He said stretch. Now hold on for a moment. Stretch. Stretch out your hand. What by definition is that? He said Give it everything you've got. He said, push it to the limit yourself. You're going to have to stretch if you want to be well. Most of us have just been coming here going, heal us, Jesus. And Jesus says, oh, sure, stretch. And we're like, heal us, Jesus. And he's like, no, 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 no. 
You see, it's where our faith kicks in. When we've taken it as far as we can go to do what God has told us to do. When we've reached toward him with all that's in us, and some of you are going, I just don't feel Jesus, then sing a little louder. Worship a little longer. Get up a little earlier. Pray a little more. Fast. Oh, that's a dirty word. Seek him more. Stretch yourself. Because when the man is commanded to stretch, Jesus says, you give it everything you have, and then I'll show up and I'll give it everything I have. Now think about this for just a moment. How many times had that man looked at his hand and thought, why don't you just go back to normal? And he had tried with everything in him to stretch it out, and it would not work. And now Jesus says to him, I want you to show everybody how inadequate you are. Stretch forth your hand, and everything in him is screaming, you can't. But all he knows is that he's not afraid of what everybody else thinks. He just is listening to what Jesus has said. And I'm tired of people being worried about how that person views their sin or that person views their past. I don't care what your past is. Calvary is level ground. Jesus will change who you are. But the question is, are you going to keep it drawn in and draw it up? Or are you going to let it out so Jesus can heal you? Didn't he say, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you? Give it to me, he says. But that's you saying, here it is, Jesus. I want you to stand with me today. Here's the truth. Guys, I want you to come up and prepare. You can't change your situation. This is the truth. But Jesus can. Jesus is calling you to stretch. He's calling you to stretch. I want you to bow your heads as quick as you can. I want to do my best to try not, not to look at you. Not to, don't you think I'm picking you out? But if you're here, some of you know atrophy has, is hit in your home. You need to reach over and you need to take your, your spouse's hand. You need, to, you need to reach over and you need to let them know. Let me just make it real plain to you. Everybody ought to be reaching over for their spouse's hand right about this moment because the devil wants to destroy your relationship. Atrophy sets in. Some of you, atrophy has ruined your family life. You're tired of it. And you're not going to let it destroy you. Some of you, atrophy has caused you to be spiritually dead and dry. And you're tired of it. So whether it's your marriage, your family, your relationships, your spirit man, you've suffered after me. I feel the Holy Spirit in this house. I know when God has come to heal people. I know when he's come to deliver situations. And I'm telling you, he is here this morning to do your miracle. I don't care how big the divide, I don't care how big the wound, my God is able. So they're going to begin to sing in just a moment, but, but let me make this plain. If you're here today and you feel Jesus calling you to stretch because you want to be well, I love what the scripture says. It doesn't say that he made the other hand better than it was. It says he restored it just as well as the other hand. Because some of you are asking Jesus to make things just like they were. And Jesus said, no, 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 don't tell me what I need to do. He said, I've got a plan to restore you to wholeness. Somebody just want what you had back. He's not here to give you what you had back. That's what, what you had is what brought you where you are. He's come to make you better. But I'm just going to, we're going to put the rub, uh, rubber to the road today. If you feel like God's calling you to stretch, these altars are open. It may be in your marriage, it may be in your life, it may be in, in your family, in your relationships. You know there's something that's causing atrophy and you want to give them to Jesus. They're going to start singing, but I want you to find a place in these altars to pray if God's speaking to you. People are beginning to move all over this building. Is it you? Is God speaking to you? Is God speaking to you? Where would I be 
Come on, God's talking. You only know. God's talking. I'm glad you see through us love. God's talking to you. A hopeless place. Come on, come on. An empty space, if not for grace. Where are you, God? He's right here waiting for you to stretch. Right here waiting for you to stretch. You only know. I'm glad you see. Right here with the love of Jesus. Do me one more favor, if you would, bow your heads for one more moment right where you are. Some of you, the stretch of faith for you is that you need to surrender your life to Jesus. And you want this ninth day of October to be the day that you give your life to Jesus Christ. You're willing to reach out a withered life to a Jesus who says, come just as you are. I'll meet you right where you are. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to come to this front. But right where you are with everyone praying. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I want today to be the day I give my life to Jesus Christ. Would you just hold your hand straight up in the air so I know to pray with you. Or where are you this morning? I'm looking all around this room. This is your day. This is your time. This service has been a wonderful success, a move of God, but it can change your life forever. Where are you? This one. I feel the Holy Spirit speaking. This one. Hold it up high if that's you. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. I thank you for souls to being saved and lives being changed today. Thank you, Jesus, for you are good and your mercy. Come on, give God a praise this morning.